When you're talking in your everyday life, think about what it means to use a number. If you said that you ate three chocolate bars, you don't mean that you ate two chocolate bars, or four, or 4.5. You mean that you ate literally and exactly three chocolates. That's why you use the number three. It's kind of an obvious point, but what we can take away from this is that we use numbers because we're certain of the value that we're trying to communicate. But there are also times when we might be unsure about the exact value of a number. In those situations, we tend to say things like, my friend ate a number of chocolate bars yesterday. Or perhaps we might say, my friend ate an unknown number of chocolate bars yesterday. Whereas in English, we might use phrases like these ones, when we want to talk about an unknown quantity, in math, we use something called variables. A variable is a letter, usually a lowercase English letter, that represents an unknown number value. So it is a numerical value in the end, but we don't know what number it really is. Maybe it's zero, maybe it's 10. It could be some random number like 317. The way in which you use a variable is by first choosing a letter. In this situation, let's choose X. After that, you just need to state what your variable will be representing. Let X represent the unknown number of chocolates eaten by my friend yesterday. Now, because you wrote this sentence right over here, whenever you use X, you're referring to the number of chocolates that your friend ate yesterday. So if you want to say that you ate two more chocolates than your friend did, you can express that total amount that you ate by saying, x plus 2. So just take a moment to think about what this x plus 2 means. We already said over here that x refers to the number of chocolates your friend ate yesterday. So what we're basically saying here is whatever number of chocolates that your friend ate, I ate two more than that. Of course, if we find out that your friend ate three chocolates, then all we have to do is substitute three for X and we'd get five. So five is the number of chocolates you will have to eat if your friend ate three. And if your friend ate 10 chocolates instead, how many will you have to eat? This time, our X is 10. And once again, since the number of chocolates you ate is already expressed by x plus 2, we can just substitute 10 for x and get 12 chocolates. Let's try another example to get used to this idea of using a variable to describe an unknown number. If you know that a coffee shop makes $2 profit off of each coffee sold, and you also know that they sold 30 coffees in the last hour, then how much was their profit in that last hour? Well, that would just be the profit per coffee multiplied by the number of coffee sold. So we have $2, which is the profit per coffee, multiplied by 30 coffee cups sold. Of course, we end up with a $60 profit in the last hour. But what if I told you to express how much money they will make in the next hour? Well, we don't know what the future beholds, so we have no idea how many cups they will sell. Aha! If we don't know the quantity of the cups that they will sell, then this is a perfect time to use a variable. We still have our original equation, which is profit per coffee cup sold multiplied by the number of coffees. And this will give us our total profit. Now, we already know the profit per coffee to be $2. But the number of coffee cups that we will sell in an hour from now is unknown. So I decide to use a letter of my choice. I will choose Q as my variable. And why? Because I feel like it. 
Let Q represent the number of coffees sold. Then the total profit that they will make in the next hour is equal to $2 multiplied by Q, or just 2Q. Awesome! So if you were told that this shop would sell zero coffees in the next hour, then they will profit zero multiplied by two, which is zero dollars. If they sell one coffee in the next hour, then they will profit two times one, which is two dollars. And if they sold two coffees in the next hour, then they will profit two times two, which is four dollars. We're probably seeing a pattern here, but selling three coffees would mean profiting six dollars. Of course, this list can go on and on and on. And although it's probably impossible for a coffee shop to sell a million coffees in an hour, we can find out how much they would make in this rather rare hypothetical situation as well. Once the number of coffees sold is determined to be 1 million, the total amount of profit can also be found right away. For this situation, Q equals 1 million, and therefore our 2Q is equal to $2 million. Great! So now you've been introduced to the idea of a variable. You know that you can choose any letter and use it as a variable as long as you state what the variable will represent with a sentence. We talked about how a variable is used when we don't know the value of a number. Naturally, if you knew the number value that you are referring to, you would just use the number itself. But if you don't, you need something to represent the entire list of possible values that this unknown number could take on. Of course, instead of writing all of these numbers out in a chart, just to express that this unknown number could be any one of these values, we can use what we learned in this video. It's efficient and it encompasses a whole range of possible situations. We can use variables to our advantage.